These days, to make it as a creator, you only need a thousand true fans. Now, this might seem obvious in the era of Kickstarter and Patreon, but in 2008, when Kevin Kelly first came up with this idea, he met with some resistance. I got a lot of pushback, including from our mutual friend, Jeremy Lanier. He says all the success of the independents were people who had left the labels, and that this idea of kind of a bottoms-up organic thing was just not happening. Let's dig in and find out where the influential idea of a thousand true fans first came from and what that means for today's creators. Kevin Kelly has a proven track record of spotting important tech trends before anyone else. One early trend Kevin spotted was the power of finding a thousand true fans. So the whole premise of a thousand true fans is that if you have direct interaction and contact with your audience and you have them pay you directly, you don't need a very big audience at that point to be able to have a livelihood. Maybe only one in a million people have the same interests that you do, but if you have a global audience and you're able to connect to each other, then there's probably a thousand people on the planet with that one in a million interest. If you do the arithmetic, this should be possible. And that's all premised on this kind of interacting with your audience directly. This was before there was Kickstarter, before there was crowdfunding platforms. And so I, I, I wrote it up as a blog post and I got a lot of pushback, including from our mutual friend, Jeremy Lanier. He, he says all the success of the independents were people who had left the labels. They had gotten their reputation, their audience from the studio system and then left. So I started to do research to see if I could find any examples. And I was beginning to find one or two people who seemed to have had an organic bottom-up example. And of course, now I encounter people almost every day who tell me that, yes, this theory, this framework enabled them or inspired them to make a thousand true fans and they're organically developing from their customers directly a livelihood. I think what happened was technology, technology developed the tools like Kickstarter, like crowdfunding, like social media that enabled people to match up. And that's what the kind of social media platforms were able to do. They facilitated and made it a little easier than it was before for someone who was really into something obscure to find other people who were also into the same obscure thing and connect. I think it probably could not have happened 20 years ago. The tools were just not there. We see from YouTube that it is possible to actually break out of that niche and to become equivalent to two blockbuster stars in the past. So I think we're still in the early days of this creator economy. This path is not for everybody because it makes dealing with your fans part of your job and maybe half of your job. And not every creator wants to spend time babysitting fans. They may not even be suited for that. They may just want to paint all day or they may just want to write and they don't want to have to deal with it. And as you get big, you probably are going to start to create those intermediate layers just to ensure that you have the time to create. There's a slider between being totally opaque and totally private. On the other end, it's totally transparent, but totally personalized. And that's the natural trade-off that we have to work out for each person, really, basically. But I think we've only begun this little... Um, movement and towards the thousand true fans creator economy. And I think we're still in the early days of what's really, really possible. You want to be able to own your audience. You want to be able to have control of that relationship. And that's what often doesn't happen as you get big on these platforms, meaning that if Facebook decides to kick you off, will you still have your audience? I'm old enough to realize that I can outlive the platforms. These platforms are very ephemeral, really. They seem to be dominating and taking over the world, but they are very, very fragile and ephemeral. I rediscovered Kevin's True Fans Insight, working on games like Ultima Online, an early graphical MMO. I wrote about Ultima Online for Wired with Kevin as my editor. And then I joined the UO team as a system designer and worked with them to solve some wicked hard problems. So how do you craft an innovative game when there's no roadmap to follow? Well, our answer was to mobilize a community of true fans, RPG gamers who love the Ultima brand and had the knowledge and the motivation to give us highly specific feedback on what we were developing. So we involved them in design discussions, included them in our beta tests, and showed them early versions of new features we were developing. These weren't just fans. 
they became co-creators, and keeping them engaged was a big part of what made Ultima Online a success. So whether you're a creator, a founder, or a product or game designer, you'll be far better equipped for success if you focus early on finding a thousand true fans. To learn more and put these ideas to work, download our free cheat sheet at gamethinking.io slash truefans. Let's get smarter together. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.